Welcome to another edition of Back in the Bushels. I am Patrick Ray, Pioneer Field Agronomist, and today I will show you how to evaluate your corn and soybean stands. We are off to a great start in 2023 compared to the cold, damp April we experienced in 2022. Soil conditions have been good to excellent for planting here in East Central Illinois, where I cover, providing us a great window for some early planting. I've been really impressed with farmers waiting for fields to be fit following Easter Sunday on April 9th. One concern on the minds of many farmers today is the forecasted cold temperatures expected over the next few days. It seems like every year there is a day that in hindsight, we just wish we would have avoided planting. Oftentimes this is linked to a cold rain event within 12 to 24 hours of planting soybeans and 24 to 48 hours for corn. Best advice is to keep a close eye on the forecast and shut down the planter if it looks like that first drink or the water imbibed by the seed will be a cold one especially for corn, as this can result in delayed uneven emergence and reduced stands. If we lose corn stand, or if the emergence is not uniform, yields will likely be reduced in corn. However, soybeans are much more forgiving to uneven emergence and reduced stands and typically show a larger yield advantage to early planting. Soybeans also imbibe water, typically in about 12 hours or half the time that it takes corn to complete this process. Once the crop emerges, there are two methods I use to evaluate stands. The first I refer to as low resolution stand counts, and the second, high resolution stand counts. Let's first take a look at low resolution stand counts. This is probably a refresher for most of you. The most common way is to evaluate stands. In a traditional way, you simply count the number of plants in a specified area. So for example, if we have 30 inch corn rows and we measure off 17 and a half feet, which equals one one thousandth of an acre. We can count the number of corn plants in each adjacent row. First row there has 34, the second 36. That's an average of 35. We multiply this by 1,000, that gives us 35,000 plants per acre. So essentially our resolution for this stand count is one one thousandth of an acre. This can be repeated in several areas of the field. In 15 inch rows, I found the exact same procedure as 30 inch rows, but instead of averaging the counts from the two rows, I add them together as one one thousandth of an acre is 34 feet 10 inches in 15 inch rows. Here's an actual example out in the field where I have stepped off one one thousandth of an acre and in the process of counting the viable plants. With my size 13 boots, it takes 15 steps and a heel, which is calibrated to one one thousandth of an acre. This saves me the trouble of having to fumble around with a tape measure out in the field. I just simply step it off and then count the plants in the adjacent rows. Now let's switch gears. Let's talk about high resolution stand counts. High resolution stand counts utilize a drone software that was developed by Pioneer. And I was fortunate to test the beta program back in 2018. So 2023 will be my sixth season collecting high resolution stand counts and this method is a real game changer. This software is very easy to set up and operate. First you set up a boundary or perimeter you want the drone to stay inside of. I typically cut off the headlands uh, when building the boundary to avoid rows going in multiple different directions. Next you enter the parameters for the drone flight such as the crop, the row width, gap detection which we'll talk more about later but the default is 12 inches grid size and acres. I typically use one acre grids for a 40 acre field and for small plots I might drop all the way down to a quarter acre in size. I'm typically going to capture my flight at an altitude of 30 to 60 feet. When you connect the drone you do a pre-flight checklist after putting in all these parameters, fly the mission, and this particular field 28 images will be captured, processed, and analyzed in about 15 to 20 minutes. Within minutes of the drone returning, a report is then generated summarizing the entire field. This report can be sent via text or email before even leaving the field. You might notice the green stand count in the center of 46,000 population. Is this a mistake? Can the high resolution stand counts be trusted? Well, I just couldn't leave this field without actually knowing the answer to that. So I uh, walked out to that spot and as you can see, the planner stopped here. Maybe there was some type of issue with the planter. Perhaps they stopped for a rock. 
And when they start it back up again in that population surge, you can see the high population there until everything bounces back out. And so, yes, this was an accurate representation there at 46,000 on that particular spot in the field. When a Pioneer team member collects a high resolution stand count of your field, you will get a nice summary report like this example. Let's break down and explain this report. At the top of the report, you can see the drone pilot name, the number of images that were captured, and the acres in this particular field. The map there on the left there shows uh, the stand count from each of the images that were collected. In this case here, we have a 57 acre field with 32 images captured. And then each of those images is color coded with a legend that breaks down the percent of the field into different population ranges. This is based off the median, similar to the average population in the field. The last section is a summary that shows that median population and also spacing along with gap analysis. Let's dive a little deeper into this. If we go into one of these individual grid points that the drone image captured, you'll see that the resolution is about 1 25th of an acre. This is 40 times more resolution compared to where we stepped off and we're just counting 1 1,000th of an acre. It would be like counting 700 feet of row for one sample point instead of just the 17 and a half feet. In addition to calculating the average population or the median population, which is 36,000 in this particular example, the software also calculates the average spacing for every plant there in the picture. So in this case, we've got 5.63 inches on average uh, between all those plants. And then there are 2,791 gaps per acre of 12 inches or more identified. Those are those yellow rectangles that you see. And we can zoom in here on the image so you can see the red dots that are placed on top of each corn plant. That's how it's able to go in there and do the analysis on the spacing or the simulation. This is part of the processing steps to calculate high resolution stand counts, spacing, and that gap analysis. Pioneer has been in the seed business since 1926. We have field proven genetic advantage to tolerate cold wet conditions. We put high quality seed in every bag and box that is screened with our proprietary Pioneer stress test. And we have the right seed treatment package with Lumigen seed treatment to really give our seed a fighting chance when we're out there in tough, cold, wet, saturated environments. Thank you for watching this Pioneer Back in the Bushels video. And be sure to contact your local Pioneer seed rep if you need an expert to help evaluate your corn and soybean stands in high resolution this year. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.